Hello everybody, this is Roger Hansen. I'm back with live uh, with Roger Hansen, that's me. I'm uh, on here to do today's topic, which is again about ancient history, and Karma Love is with me. Um, say Hi everyone. Hello, Karma. Now, uh, last week, we started getting into a good topic um, when it came to uh, Sanitu Theatheon, or however his name is pronounced. We're still trying to figure that out. But uh, um, the text that uh, I've been going off of is uh, an old Christian uh, text that uh, is probably the only known text that holds a lot of uh, quotes from uh, ancient uh, ancient uh, collectors of, uh, of uh, documents and stuff, or compilers. They, they'd compile old documents, and Sanatuniathion was mentioned in there, um, and other uh, references as well. Um, in the book, just so everybody know, we're not like bouncing uh, from place to place. We're actually following this book and going according to the references that are given in the book. So, uh, just so everybody knows that. Um, would you like to say something, Karma? Well, in regards to the book, I've just been more so focused on the podcast that you sent me. I, but, um, I'm not aware of the book. If you linked it, can you link it? I mean, I know this is what you're doing, but I'm saying me personally not familiar with having like engaged with the book at all so if you link me in there in the chat too so i can have it but okay so yeah, this I is my more thing um i, I, I had questions for you i know we're gonna go in the lab because because now that i'm learning about them some stuff brings me to, i just wanted to know how much you know in regards if you did but so they what i heard was that they were enemies of the greek and it it's wild to me because i was wondering because a lot of their um like traditions kind of similar are a little bit similar and i was just wondering is there any way that we can find that they definitely did get like um besides the correlations we're discovering ourselves is there anywhere that they actually notate saying hey yeah we got this from greek culture or yeah, or do this apollo apollo was a phoenician god before it was a greek god <laughs> really i didn't uh, uh, Apollo was actually the freaking uh, head of the pantheon in the uh, Phoenician uh, belief system. Like, and uh, he was just incorporated into the Greek mythology, which later he was also incorporated into the Romans. But yeah, Apollo is the, the best uh, example. And I just started reading the Iliad. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Yeah. And that, that that is it. Okay, so I had two questions because does it not parallel with almost with what you're writing as well as what we're speaking of in regards to, right? Um, because some of their names, like they have a five year old and I think about Philo Bibius. Like it's just, I don't know, is are they not like similar or are they not related? Because Philo Bibius, we talk about from Phoenicia, but yeah. well, the Phoenician history, but there's a Fibo, is Fibo is in the Iliad, and that's why I was just wondering, are they like now on the Iliad is uh, Philo with the Phoenicians or is he with the Greeks? Okay, so let me just go back because I just started it. I just started it. I th I think I saw Elon Musk tweet that it was a good book, and we've been doing a lot of history. So I figured like, well, okay, why not? And um, I know I read it, well, I had to read a bit of it in school. We didn't read the whole thing now that I see it, but um, I had to read a bit of it. Ah, no, focus. Okay, I'm still listening. But um, yeah, I'll go back and look and then I'll actually oh, it, eat it's it. It's fine, it's fine. We can go back over it and everything. Um, and cover Next it Tuesday, a, right? Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good topic and stuff to cover. Because okay. Philo of Biblos, I mean, he's he's important. Um, he was and just uh, Porphyro or Porphyri of Tyre was another character when it came to Biblos, and, uh, and uh, um, 
that there were other people besides Santa Gen Geniathon, which uh, were back during that time. Like I was telling you about uh, Plotinus, and they were the, the students of Plotinus mm -hmm. in uh, Neoplatonism. So. Yeah, 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 and they thought that about how they thought it come came from Plato and stuff like that. Yeah, we were discussing that a bit, but um, I still, I just sometimes it just seems like, and we say this before, but like that everything kind of correlates, but yeah. it, but they don't really call the correlation. Like you know what I mean? They don't say like this is this, and we relate to them on this. It's always more of what. Even though they're a likeliness or um, a similarity, it seems to still kind of drive the cultures apart. And so that's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of baffling to me. Well, the really information, a lot of the information is screwed up. Like last week, remember when we were talking about, uh, um, what was it around? Um, Semiramis? Yeah. And yeah. I, and she I still was supposed have to be the queen though. of Assyria. Well, they tried mm -hmm. to. In, in this book, which was written like almost 2,000 years ago, okay, just so you know, um, it tries to correlate her as being the one who freaking uh, founded Nineveh when today, in today's time, we know that that's not true. It wasn't her, okay? Yeah. So a lot of their information back then was pretty screwed up, and they got their information wrong. Like, the book I'm going off of was written by a Christian who was arguing against the pe against pagans, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. not only... Dude, but everything that's represented in it, not everything, but a lot of it has to do with paganism, so... Right, and that's, it's kinda interesting. that's one of the reasons why, like, this... this text itself is very important because a lot of this information is gone like there's no record whatsoever of it whatsoever the only thing that's la left is not even the fragments of this book this book is gone too the only co the original one is like only copies of it were uh, retained so even this book itself is like gone you know what I mean it's just lost in time so that's why I have no way of being able to locate it. This is the Book of Gates? No, this is, uh, I, I, I forgot the name of it. I have it up. You don't have to, it, we can, you can, because I mean, I can just hit you in the chat. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. even if you know it right now, and then you want to go back in here and tell people you can. It's uh, basically what I used as a Phoenician, uh, a reference for Phoenician uh, theology and paganism and stuff. Um, I want to see what I was, that girl, Santa, I had her pulled no. up and I, I had a question about Santa and Trinusium. Go ahead, because I'm looking for a shouts and messy on her getting closer. No, shouts um, and what I wanted to get into more, um, and, uh, Shredata. it was the Vagasa in India. Um, they mentioned that after we got through, uh, uh, Ninas and uh, when they mentioned uh, Gideon. Now, Gideon is the story out of the Bible. I don't know if you have ever yeah, heard, I've of heard of it. I've heard of it. But that they, they said that that has no proof. Um, it's just uh, people say that he was a contemporary of Gideon, which there's no proof to back that up. Um, then uh, they compare him to Vagasa. And, uh, Vagasa. How do you spell Vagasa? That's what I was getting ready to say. Uh, I think what they're talking about is the Vita Vyasa, okay? And, uh, the Vita Vyasa, or Vita Vyasa was the sage who compiled the, the, the Vetas. I don't know if you ever heard of the, the Vetas before. Mm -mm. Vetus Bagasa, how do you spell it? No, B E T U S Vetus? No, or? V V E D A. And it's Vyasa. V Y A S A. Oh, I see it here now. V That's a writer. Okay, hold yeah. on. He was so. a sage who compiled the Vetas. And now the Vetas is some of the oldest uh, written uh, text. The son of the sage, yeah, I see. And the grandson of the sage. Which, okay, okay, okay. I'm listening now. Hey, okay. What I have here it says, uh, 
consisting of a diverse family of philosophical teachings and customs. Hinduism is the oldest existing religion in the world, practiced today by billions of people and on every continent. Believed by adherents to have known beginnings or end and therefore referred to as Sanatana Dharma, the eternal way. There is no single founder, prophet, or authority of Hinduism. Having said that, one cannot fully appreciate the Hindu religion without recognizing the significance of the sage Vita Vyasa, who is widely revered as credited and credited for compiling much of Hinduism's most prominent and influential spiritual texts, including the Vedas. The 18 Pur Puranas and the world's largest epic yeah. poem, the Mahabharata. The Mahabharata. I keep saying that wrong when I read it. The Mahabharata. The Vedas, translated as knowledge in Sanskrit, are a collection of hymns uh, presenting key Hindu teachings regarding the divine, deemed eternal truths. The v Vedas were passed down via the oral tradition for thousands of years before Veda Vyasa is believed to have compiled them in written form. It is said that the philosophy of the Vedas was further developed and explained by Vyasa in the Puranas in the Maharabhatas, which also includes the Bhagavata Gita, known as the Son of Song of God. Hindu text says Vyasa was born during a period of time known as the Vaparaya Yuga, which is said to have ended roughly 5,000 years ago. According to the Vedas, time is cyclical, divided into four ages, yugas, four yugas called uh, Satya, Tetra, uh, Treta, Devapara, and Kali. The yugas we, we're in now, which is the Kali. Because the yugas move in a cycle from Satya to Kali, and then beginning again in Satya, a different realized soul is born in every yuga cycle specifically for the purpose of preserving the vedas in written form thus veda vyasa is the title or position much like president mayor or chief given to the particular sage specifically empowered by the divine to compile and classify the vedas at the end of the Vapara Yuga. And that's spelled D V A P A R A. Um, Vita, wow. Vita Vyasa of the current uh, particular cycle of Yugas was born to Satyavati, the daughter of a fisherman. During her youth, while performing her job of ferrying travelers across the Yamuna River, Satyavati met a great sage named Parashara. Becoming attracted to each other, the two went to an island where they could be alone and ended up conceiving Vita Vyasa. The legend says that being no ordinary soul, Vyasa was born that very day, grew immediately into maturity, and was given the name Krishna Devapayani or Yana. Krishna meaning dark and Devapayani meaning island born. Okay, so listen, K, right? K Krishna? Yeah. Yeah, I know there's a I know of Krishna um like people pray to her she's like a deity that people pray to worship mm -hmm. krishna yeah and that that means dark and then divai payana meaning island born <coughs> um now that would most likely mean that uh 
this man was dark skinned and he was from an island maybe somewhere off the the shores of India or somewhere like that. That's usually how researchers find out about things because like these texts will leave little clues behind, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, That's what I'm gonna hear it's talking about said to live of a hermit, um through man Bentara though became immortal. I don't know. He's determined to live the life of an ascetic, the Yasa, no, determined to live the life of an ascetic, the Yasa left, but promised such Yavati he would return if she ever needed him. As providence would have it, such Yavati later became the wife of the emperor of the world, Shantanu and had two sons with him. Unfortunately, Shantanu and the two sons died, leaving the kingdom in need of a king. Without an heir to their throne, other hostile rulers threatened the stability of the kingdom and the world, and so such Yavati frantically searched for a solution. Remembering Vyasa, Remember Vya remembering Vyasa's promise, Setyavati called upon her firstborn and, and asked him to beget children with the widows of her dead sons. Vyasa agreed and thus conceived a son with each of the widows as well as one with a maidservant, producing three sons in total before returning to his asceticism. Asset Asceticism. <laughs> yeah, asceticism. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. You did good. Hindus, mm -hmm. no Hindus, take away many lessons from Vyasa's life. First, first and foremost, being his determination to serve and look after the welfare of others. From the moment he was born, he felt no desire for personal material pursuits and instead chose to live a renounced life of spiritual discipline. <clears throat> Though dedicated to his spiritual practices, when his mother and the world needed his help to bring stability to the kingdom by producing an heir, he set aside his personal commitment, did what was requested of him, and then returned to his renounced lifestyle without asking for anything in return. And when he knew the coming of Kali Yuga was, and when he knew the coming of Kali Yuga was imminent, out of compassion, he compiled a plethora of spiritual texts to provide guidance for the people of what is considered the most difficult age. Hindu scripture describes Vyasa as being Charajivi or or immortal being who is still alive today choosing to remain on the earth for the well-being of others until the end of the current Kali Yuga some of the more prominent sages of Hinduism Hinduism's most significant spiritual lineages include Adi Shakaracharya and <laughs> Madhya no, Madhvacharya. <laughs> I, I would like have to see that one. <laughs> I, yeah. just... I can spell them for you if you want me to. Oh, the demon. Age of the demon. Age of the darkness. Kali Yuga, yeah. He said you have personally met Vita Vyasa and received instructions from him. Because Vita Vyasa compiled the wealth of spiritual literature used by most Hinduism Hinduism's major lineages, many view him as the original guru, which is why Guru Parnima, the day to pay respects to the guru, is celebrated on his birthday. Though the religion has many schools of thought, resulting in a variety of different philosophical conclusions, followers of pretty much every Hindu sect can agree Hinduism wouldn't be what it is today if not for Vita Vyasa. And this is but, so, 
this also goes into what we were talking about with uh, Sarah Chenatheon, where he was talking about like mortals being deified. Yeah, yeah, and it, when you were saying that there was happening, well, a desire for separation between the gods and like the men that were on pedestals as gods. When you were saying Kali Yuga, I thought you were saying Kali. Like, I honestly, and then that's why when you're saying it now, and I'm looking at the, they're like, what are the four Yugas of Hindu, Hinduism? Or, yeah, it's Hinduism. But um, I was just wondering, so, okay. Yeah, because you're saying Kali Yuga, and I, before I thought you were saying Kali, and it's just like, okay. I got a little bit confused at that point. But I figured it out, because I was looking, I guess I was looking it up when I, I look it up when I get confused. Now, uh, in my reading, it says, his book goes back into fabled antiquity. Uh, Atheon, like Vagasa in India, is said to be to have been a compiler of extremely ancient theogonic and historical documents that have been transmitted to him either by oral tradition or in writing. Sanchuni Atheon uh, derived the sacred lore from the mystic inscriptions on the Hominon, which is a sun pillar. Now, I have pulled up... Um, can you share it? Yeah, I, I pulled up uh, something of uh, the sun pillars, and you really wouldn't believe this when I when I tell you this. Okay, what it is, but. Um, oh, and also sidebar, Mr. Robot had a really good idea that you should share your stream into the history. I don't follow them. I was going to do it for you, but I I, I looked through my chat and I don't have them on there, and I'm attempting to listen to you as well. So if you already have them, you should. This on Tuesday. Well, I mean, if if he wants me to, but I just I never got like a clear understanding of what he wanted to do there. You know what I'm saying? And like I, I'd be more than happy to share them on the history one. But I, oh, is that his? Is that his channel? Yeah, that's his channel. Well, he should share it. I I just don't have it. I I don't have, <laughs> I have to be geopolitics, but not really at that. And I was thinking about ancient mysteries, but it's not really a mystery. Or do you consider it a mystery? Because I follow ancient mysteries. Do you think this is a mystery? Everything about ancient history is a mystery. Oh, well, maybe I'll share it there then. Now, uh, believe it or not, the best way to do it, and it helps out with what you were wanting to do uh, a little while ago, you were wanting to talk about uh, about the Catholic Church. Okay. Yes, yeah. and I would, yeah, I was just asking now, you because uh, I'm learning more. I don't me, know enough. Let me tell you a little bit about the sun pillars, okay? Now, yeah. Now, um, when you dive into the sun pillars in paganism, uh, they have you can come up on uh, an uh, an article. It's uh, from uh, RomanCatholicism.com, and it's called Paganism in Catholic uh, Church. Now uh, you can find that on Paganism in Catholic Church. Uh, slash paganism in Catholic Church with uh, Roman Catholicism dot com. And uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was sharing a thing. Go ahead now. Um, Roman paganism. Roman, do it again, please. Um, oh, I see it right here. Paganism, Catholic Church. Hold on, I'll just look them up. Paganism and Catholic Church. Hold on, this is something different. This is I'm gonna find that on the website you just told me about. Yeah. I'm pull up the first or I'll post the link into the chat. Yeah, can you do that? I just dropped all my stuff. Paganism. So I'll just I'll just do the chat real quick and post the link <laughs> it, over on the side. <sighs> just hit that link right there. Okay. Oh no because okay I'll do it on that. Yeah, I got it. Oh, I don't have Jitsi on my iPad. I don't want to do it on the iPad. I do my work on my iPad. I'm. Are you able to pull it up? Yeah, if I pull it up, it'll put it on my feed because they're linked. It'll put it in my internet history. So I just, yeah, I'm good. Now I can. Now, um, in this, it says it's hard to ignore the paganism all over the Catholic Church, from buildings, from the building. Or from the buildings, worship practicing, teaching, etc. It's everywhere and impossible to overlook. 
Before reviewing this pledge, we recommend checking out the links below, which is Pagan Roots of Catholicism Part 1 and Pagan Roots of Catholicism Part 2. Let's start with the obelisk, okay? The first thing you have to ask is, what is an obelisk? Let's look at some history behind the obelisk and then see what scriptures have to say. The Pagan Obelisks Nimrod's Penis or Church Steeple Pillars mm. The pillars of Canaanites erected to worship their gods were actually phallic symbols commemorating the incursion of the demon god sun gods, sons of Elohim when they had sex with the daughters of men to create their Nephilim or demigod children in the pre and post flood world. Which you can see that in Gen Genesis 6, 2 through 6. What is the point here? Yahweh commanded Israel to destroy these pagan symbols and to have nothing to do with them. They were abominations that would defile Yahweh set apart people. Um, the well known pointless obelisks or sun pillars of Egypt are found in the scriptures in the Hebrew word mitzvaba, mitzviba, and homonym. The former word is best translated as pillars or as sun pillars and the later as sun images. Now, in uh, Jeremiah 43:13, this mitzvah sun pillars are identified as those obelisks found in Beth Shemesh in Greek Heliopolis in the land of Egypt. Unfortunately, the King Ver James Version rendered this word mitzvah in most places, places as images instead of obelisks or pillars as the other English versions correctly do. In Exodus 23, 24, Israel was commanded to break down these pillars of the heathen nations. He repeated this in Exodus 34, 13 and Deuteronomy 7, 5 and Deuteronomy 12, 3. And in many other places in scripture, these pillars or sun pillars are epith no, emphatically described as an abomination by our mighty one. Israel was not only commanded to break down these pagan pillars of sun pill or sun pillars, they were strictly commanded not to erect them. Deuteronomy 16.22 and Leviticus 26.1 in, in Deuteronomy, okay, now 16.22, our Mighty One says that he hates them. However, the Catholic Church has one in the center, center of the Vatican. This can't be more offensive to God. Statue. I'm reading. Now, that is the, the what, what they're talking about. Uh, these obelisks are what they i'm not going to get much farther into that because i don't want to get into uh, no, no 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 i understand i was just well i mean for me personally i don't want to get too much into religious uh debate you know what i mean so right I, the the whole point of that was um because they were talking in this writing about uh about the hominem okay a hominem is a sun pillar and um they're like, saying that god said to get rid of those but they kept it anyway and yeah right yeah. that's what you just read us right i was yeah. just making sure i understood it before you moved too far ahead i thought you were going to explain further so i was just making sure like what i hear is basically yeah what i heard so okay you can go ahead whatever you were going to say i was just making sure i was caught up now they say that uh on these uh pillars okay these uh sun pillars that is where uh sanitarium would go and he would take notes on uh 
Sanitarian. He would take notes down on what was written on these uh, ancient pillars, you know, when it came to uh, when it came to the sun pillars, you know, the lore and everything that was written on them, basically. Sanitarian or yeah, something? Sanitarian. Same person, right? Okay, Thank I was just you. making sure I have it. Thank you for straightening me out on that, cause I uh, have a hard time saying those that name. If ever you get tired of reading, cause you read a lot, I don't mind helping you. I mean, like, but I'm not saying like put it on me. I'm just saying if you'd like, you know, what I mean, to take over for a little bit or any time, just tell me. I mean, you know, what I mean, sure, show. I'm just here because you teach me a lot, and I don't mind helping, cause like I come all the time, so you know. That's it's good if it gets overwhelming i'll i'll definitely have you do it even if like before the shows you want me to read up on some stuff and stuff like that if you tell me that i'll do it you know what i mean you just will have to tell me i do what i can as far as my interest sometimes my interest is a little different than the content matter in any way so you know what i mean like yesterday you sent me through out that you you talked about the snake guy and we were talking about your book mind you and like i went from there to like a guy that has the same last name as me. Like, it was just a big, 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 like you, like, so it's like, I hear what you say, but I hear other stuff as well, if that makes any sense. So I'm saying, if you tell me, hey, can you, or will you, or I'd like you to, then I don't have a problem listening to you. You know what I'm saying? It's no big deal. It's just a matter of sometimes my research is a little different. Yeah, I know. And like, uh, that that's perfectly fine. You know what I mean? Cause like, what what I do want to do is like what you found uh, the other day or today that you mentioned. <clears throat> I do want to go over that. You know what I mean? Because that's that's pretty good, especially when it comes to freaking uh, Phoenician history and stuff. And when you was talking about like Apollo, or when you was talking about things that can prove it. You know, um, Apollo is a perfect example. You know what I mean? Apollo was actually the first. He was he he was uh, one of the freaking uh, gods in the freaking Phoenician uh, pantheon. Uh, now that you're reading uh, the Iliads, you're going to hear the story of uh, the city of Troy. You know what I mean? And all the Phoenician gods. They'll explain to you which ones were the Phoenician gods and which ones were the Greek gods. Okay, so it'll make it make more sense. Well, then I have to indulge. Like, I I found more free time to that I guess I was not utilizing to read. And I'm like, oh, I can use this time to read. And then so, like, yeah, I should be reading a little bit more than I have been. So hopefully that works out for us. Because I'm going to just pick your brain. Anything that I have questions about, I'm going to ask mm -hmm. you. So. That's yeah. fine. Now, uh, most of the lore and everything and the mystical inscriptions, he... Uh, derived from the hominin, which is what they referred to it as, and they're called the sun pillars. And those are those obelisks. They have them in uh, Egypt, too. Um, the Phoenicians had obelisks as well. They were everywhere, and they used to have all the lore written down on, on the bottom part in, with inscriptions. Not only lore, but, like, stories. Well, I guess it would be lore, too. Like, make the emperors and the... Uh, would make up like uh, stories about how great they were and stuff like that, you know, when they built those obelisks. So you'd have stuff like that, and he would go around and he would uh, he would collect all that information and compile it together. So now uh, the sun pillar uh, it, it stood in uh, Phoenician temples and. Uh, Porphyry of Tyre, we were talking about before. He said yeah, that. I know, and I just found out Tyre was the first area because of the thing you sent me that they were wearing dye. They got dye from rock snails, and the dye would either be purple or red depending on the species, and that's why those colors, purple, and um, it, it became a sought-out um, thing these colors and um like the phoenicians yeah they were the first to start doing but the phoenicians specifically of tyree they were the ones who started using the rock snail for their dye and like that's why it became something that was sought after yeah i learned that from the thing he sent me mm -hmm. now for fire eye, 
says that Santa Chenathian wrote a history of the Jews based on information derived from Her- Heromobal, i.e. Jeroboam, a priest of the god Yavo, i.e. Yahweh, which is the Jewish and the Christian god. He dedicated it to Abel-Bel, Abel-Bal, or Abel-Bal, king of Beratus. The, the, th- the story was thought to be uh, fi- fi- fictional, fi- fictional because of its reference to Beratus. However, excavations in Beratus in recent years prove that the city may be older than Babylon. Uh, maybe older than Bablos that has cultures, tra- uh, culture, cultural traditions uh, to 18,000 BC. And uh, on a, I don't know, if, uh, it's showing the city right here on the stream share, isn't it? No, no, my no. It shows share? your chat. It's showing your chat. It's just showing my chat. Yeah, but, but. Let me see if I can. Uh, Pull out of this real quick and set it up because um, yeah, it's oh wait a minute yeah my live stream and uh, I do have uh, the Wikipedia up for this one. <laughs> Did you see that one? Disclaimer. <laughs> do you see this? Yeah, I do now. Hold on, let me zoom in. See, now, I wish I could bring up the Minds chat so I could see it bigger. It's fine. Oh, look, it's pretty. Is that better? Yeah, it's so beautiful. Now, this is Baratus right here. And, and uh, uh, Mount Lebanon over here. Um, limits of Beratus district area I, under Claudius. What does that mean? That they did not like the people of Lebanon? Does that say anti-Lebanon? So those are the people that dislike Lebanon? Or what does that mean? Anti-Lebanon is that's probably what it meant. Um, I don't know. I want to know. Hold on one second. Mount Lebanon is right over here. Can you see my mouse? Yeah, I see it over Mount Lebanon. I see Mount Lebanon over there. Your mouse on very Beratius. Halopolius. Bayback. Heliopolis. Heliopolis and Baalbek is uh, very important when it comes to uh, historical events, too, because you'll even hear um, ancient astronauts talking about this place. Can you zoom out of this map or no? This is how far. Oh, I, like, I, I, I want to see this same thing, but in reference to like what's surrounding it. Now, um, Roman coin minted in uh, Beratus. That's what their Roman coin looks like. Um, this is actually how the dime looks. This is uh, the flag of Beirut, features an open book. Of the motto Beratus Netrux Legum, Beirut, Mother of Laws, on one side of its Arabic translation and on the other. Hold on, can you go back to that picture again? Which one? This one? This one? No, no, the other one. Well, yeah, maybe. No, 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 no. Um, the flag. Oh, the flag. Yeah, that one's pretty too. Yeah, I would like to see the flag. Oh. Oh, cool, see that that's Thank another you. thing remember earlier on i was talking to you about standards yeah this Mother is standard. this this right here is an example of a standard of, and that's what i'm talking about <laughs> can you go back to the um dime too as well please to the what the dot. Well, it's not the dot. That is incomplete. This right here. Yeah, call it Fabiama. Yeah, Beth. Then a bit, 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 bit. This is Roman coin minted in Beratus. Okie dokie. I'm ready. Now, right here, you have Roman ruins in the, in the Roman bath gardens. And this 
take Kiss place. Me a lot. This takes place long after the time period that we're talking about. How do you take a bath in there? I want to get a bath in the uh, work out there. I know about the bathhouses. Okay, it was. Okay, uh, you okay. might actually like the back of the stories them. behind them. Shana, I can't remember. You can't remember the Roman <laughs> bath gardens. This is a bath garden that was out there. So those little cubby thingies is where they used to do that at. So right like here. you go in there. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's it. They just told me. That's crazy. This is okay, go see me. Everybody bathed out in the open with one another. Like it didn't matter seeing another person naked or not. Yeah, well be happy and yeah, and she any more seeing. And this is a bath garden right here. I only see part of that one. Just oh, what's part. this? This one? No, no, no. With these guys in this boat. Oh, okay. That's the Phoenician hippo shit. Okay, hold on one second. Um, and then it's I. The H I P P O S ship. Okay, I'll listen. I actually <laughs> modeled like a generic version of one of these ships too. <laughs> yeah, it was actually like more of the battleship during that time period. How they would go in with their navy and ram their enemies. Seriously? That, yeah, that that horse's head up there in the front. Yeah, I see it looking like a dragon. Uh huh. Yeah. On the Looking back. on this one, it looks more like a dragon. I apologize. For that. On the, uh, on the freaking, uh, on the, uh, battle, sh uh, ships they had, like, they would literally ram that. That was a ramming, for ramming, where you'd ram it into your enemy ship so that you could, uh, sink it. I wish you could see a real one. These ones just look like they wouldn't be able to take a lot of ramming. Like it, oh, here goes a better one. I guess inside, I see what you say. Oh, here we go. There we go. I see it here. I see what you're saying. Now, Baratus was briefly known as Laodicea in Phoenicia, ancient Greek, or Laodicea in Canaan uh, from the second century to 64 BCE was the ancient city of Beirut in modern-day Lebanon from the Roman Republic through the Roman Empire in early Byzantine period, late antiquity. Beratus became a Roman colonia that would be the center of Roman presence in the eastern Mediterranean shores south of Anatolia. The veteran Veterans of two Roman legions under Augustus were established in the city, the 5th Macedonian and the 3rd Ga Gaelic, that afterward quickly became Romanized and was the only fully Latin-speaking city in the Syria-Phoenicia region until the 4th century. Although Beratus was still an important city after earthquakes around 400 CE, Tyre was made the capital of the Roman province of Phoenicia, of the great law schools of Rome, Constantinople, and Beratus. The law schools of Beratus stood preeminent. The Code of Justin Justinian one part of the Corpus Juris Civis, the codification of Roman law ordered early in the 6th century CE by Justin, Justinian I and fully written in Latin was mostly created in this school. So this was a very important city for the Romans. And this, like I said, even goes farther, or this is even farther ahead in time than what we're talking about, too, you know what I mean? So they're not even, they're not even, like, on the history in early 140 BCE. Where is, okay, 
I guess because I'm looking at the map and I'm just attempting to like just gauge because I, I see their trade line. Um, it, was, it says the Phoenician expansion. I see this. I'm just looking because I'm looking for Rome. I see Assyrian Empire here. I, this is something, it's probably right in my face. And that's why I don't understand. See, because I see, isn't that Sicily? Yeah, that's Sicily. That's the blue. Okay, so that's Italy. So it's here. And so, yeah. And then, see, that doesn't make any sense. Okay. Uh, I I just, um. This is, this is kind of like, a, just kind of explaining the area. It's kind of like the other day when we were talking about Haran and, uh, uh, Nineveh. So this top, this bottom right here. Okay. Shoot. I apologize. I dropped you on the floor. But the this is here is Africa. So it's the top of Africa. Here is Egypt. I see here, and that's the Sahara. And then this purple is showing that coast under Phoenician influence, and then Phoenicia is in pink but it's only right here and that's over there by the jordan but it's directly to egypt but if you go around here the influence goes here it's just see that is important trade and partner it's also lebanon wow. keep that in mind and the other day we were talking about canaanites yeah 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 i just read something about the canaanites but my brain's all joggy now so go ahead what were you gonna say oh i'm i'm just having a conversation with you right now because I was thinking, I thought you were gonna tell me, I thought you were gonna tell me something about the Canaanite because it was something recently. But I'm reading, like I'm probably just reading too many different things at the same time. But I, um, yeah, yeah okay. Now, uh, uh, yes. now this goes back to what I was talking about. Uh, Papyri of Tyre says that Senate Chenathion wrote the history of the Jews based on information derived from Heramobal, i.e. Jeroboam, a priest of the god Javo, i.e. Yahweh, and that would be the Christian and Jewish god. He dedicated it to Ababal, or Abibal, king of Baratus. The story was thought to be fictional because of its reference to Baratus. However, excavations in Baratus in recent years prove that the city may be older than Babylos that has cultural traditions to 8000 BC. And see, they're also finding out more evidence too about cities in that area like Jericho. Um, they, they believe that Jericho might even be older than some of the old Sumerian cities that were built. I don't know if that guy that you do, that guy that you, that does the, this podcast, I just saw that he has Sumerian stuff, so I'm going to listen to that as well, but I got it. So, okay. I, if you've already done this, I apologize. If you have not done this and you're unable to do it now, I can wait. But I'm going to put it out here so you can understand where I'm going. So, like, we talk about the Sumerians, we talk about the Phoenicians, and then, like, I'd like a way for me to, I guess, better understand, like, direct correlations of these cultures and influence. Like, okay, I see here the trade lines. They had like copper and marble so I could understand the influence. Influence now, influence today, significance type thing. And then, okay, dyes, grass, metal work, gold, slaves, CO, and that's what we were talking about. And then we were even talking about the Trade Federation, the Trade Federation, but that, that's, that's supposedly well, in that's, space, that's but it's, story, I know. Though. Yeah, but it's not, because I looked it up yesterday while you were talking, it's just, it's real, but I understand what you're saying. It's just, go ahead. Um, um, hold on a minute. Freaking, uh. You post, yeah, Mr. Robot's talking to you. Yeah, I know. That's you... what I just noticed. He just, uh, posted that. You don't put it on mines yet. It is, though, because, yeah, th yeah, time listens it to it on mines. I, uh,. I usually don't post the video link. They, the video link itself on uh, Minds doesn't show up, so like I could share it basically, but that's about it. Um, I mean, no, I mean you're live streaming on Minds now, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, maybe you can drop in. Maybe that's what he means, or no? You don't think I can, so? I can share it to him. 
Ye there? Maybe I suckered him into joining. I don't know. Come on now. Did they just do what I think they did? Um... Out again. That's crazy. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was me, and no, I'm sitting me, here, me. and I'm like, fellow ghoster. Okay. Yeah, they they signed me out. They, I ended up having to sign back in. They, I got kicked from it, but uh. I heard a doorbell. That sounded like it. Like, dude, like it sounded like you logging out. I guess I could imagine what logging out would sound like. That's the, like yeah, it was. It was pretty messed up. They they literally knocked me into another jitsi room. <laughs> I got, I caught on to that because of the other day. So at least you understood quickly, yeah. Because I'm the phone. My phone's just sitting down. I dropped you once and I moved you. So yeah, but I got it. I got it all back up and running now, so I caught, up, I caught on to it quick. Let me see if the, yeah, the stream's back up. But yeah, um, you know, and the thing that we were talking about when it comes to the, like the Lebanon and stuff, it's really important. Hey, Mr. Robot, good to have you, bud. Hi, Mr. Robot. Hi. He's there, he's probably Hi, just Hi, baby. How are you? Can you hear him? No, I think it's I think it's muted. Yeah, he, a little he bit has it muted. But uh, hey, when, baby. it's uh, well, hmm. with uh, okay. um, the Phoenicians and everything though in Lebanon, um, the whole thing about the Canaanites when it comes like to the relationship between the Phoenicians and the Canaanites it's very important that you have to understand both uh, cultures you know what I'm saying because they they uh, intertwine a lot and uh, like the term Canaanite is also misinterpreted a lot of times too you know what I'm saying to the extent of to the like extent where freaking people think they're nothing more than mercenaries and freaking retro baits. <laughs> the Philistines. I always wondered if the Philistines and the Phoenicians weren't actually the same people. I I honestly I, think that could be a possibility to be honest with you. I, I agree with you on that. That's something I've been thinking about too. It's... It, that's... Um, there was another interesting thing, just sorry to, to interrupt, but um, there was another interesting thing where um, the headdresses of the Phoenicians uh, were also documented in South America. So they, there is that possibility that they actually crossed the Atlantic. Um, so there's these statues in... Um, in uh, what's the place in Mexico uh, City, uh, near near there called um, Atlantis de Tula. I'll send the link soon. But um, the headdresses look the same as the supposed sea peoples that attacked Egypt at the end of Ramses the second. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just find it interesting. Like, what that, did you say um, the name of them were? Well, I have this working theory, right? Let's see where it goes. But my my working theory is that there was a place called Atlantis, as Plato had stated. Um, he got that information from his ancestor Solon, which got it from the ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians told him that this place Atlantis existed 12,000 BC in the Atlantic where the Azores Plateau is today. So between South America and Africa, okay? Mm -hmm. And it would have been the perfect vantage point for any naval dwelling people um, to go international, uh, to go around the planet, basically. 
you know, because they, you'd be able to easily cross the Atlantic if you could stop at the Azores Plateau, right? Because back then, it, we were in the Ice Age and the sea level was like four, 400 feet less, uh, uh, lower, 200 meters lower. And um, basically, that, the, the Azores Islands, and you know where the Azores are, Tama? I'm looking it up now. But I was asking you, did you say Atlantis uh, what? Say you again? said in Mexico, it's a place called Atlantis what? Oh uh, yeah, Atl uh, I'll send the link. Atlantis de Tula. Um, oh, de Tula. Um, She's good at Atlant search engines. Like, like she'll she'll try to search it out before you send the link. So. Yeah, I already see. It. Okay, okay. Well, Atlantis D E. Uh, sorry, Atlantis space D E space Tula T U. -L -L. Yeah, no, I already have it. You don't have to spell it. I already see them. I'm looking at the pictures of them now. You don't have to spell it. I already got it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, okay. I just cool. was because I was attempting to tie it into what we were saying. So, so, we were saying so notice those statues, right? And look at the headdresses yeah. of, on those statues. I okay? see what you're saying. And uh, later on, we'll, we'll show you pictures of the sea peoples. And uh, they, like, s some of them had similar headdresses. Okay. Now, with and, the sea um, peoples, too, there was, like, multiple tribes that were involved, but a lot yeah, of Yeah, so, so, so let, me, let me just go run with this story quickly. So at that time, the sea level was lower. So there was potentially a civilization where the Azores Plateau is now. Oh, the Azores Island is there now, but, but potentially there's like a lot under the water there that was exposed back then. And um, this I, is what I know Solbon doing says. A, I know they're doing a where it, like, research too concerning all yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. Actually, like, yeah, there was uh, a guy, he found some stuff under the water there with, with so, uh, sonar. And uh, I think it was an Italian uh, fisherman or whatever. And he found structures under the water there. Yeah. And I remember that a few years ago and it kind of went dark. Like no one, no one really talked about it. But well, they're doing it. Aren't, aren't they, so, uh, aren't they finding uh, cultures that are sunk down on uh, like the southern coast of Spain and stuff right there where the... Uh... Yes, yes. So this is all part of this, right? Because it, imagine this, if you're a civilization in the middle of the Atlantic, you have the, like exactly how Plato described it. He says um, they, they were on the main island, but past the island they were on the mainland as well. So they, he's saying they were in South America as well, okay? So he said um, Atlantis wasn't an island, it was an empire that stretched from South America to Lebanon. Like, literally covered like half the planet, all right? Isn't and, this what um, we were talking about the other day? Um, so, so yeah. on, no, Solon, Solon was uh, the father of uh, Plato. Now, Plato, we haven't even gotten into. Like, I, I, I'm... I'm like focusing but I thought on about the... finding the culture um, in South America, and isn't supposedly there's something like cocaine or something like that on one of the? Oh, you're talking about no, it's a on mummy. the mummy. That's yeah, different. Mummy. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, 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 that's and the... exactly. This is exactly what I'm talking about. So, like, this is the evidence that shows that there was trade and there was movement between South America and Egypt. Okay. Or at least what which they're presenting it at. That yeah. there, there would have been a stopping point, which would be the Azores, okay? Which is where Atlantis was. And um, so... Well, that, about that the date and the truth. I, I believe that when, when the end of the Ice Age happened, the whole Randall Carlson comet impact theory, right? When all that catastrophe happened, um, there was refugees from that island from that island because it was a high civilization they had high technology for that time there and um, they had the best seeds and the best everything of the world there because they were the best trading post in the whole world right they had the most gold they had the most everything like Plato describes it beautifully you should really read that that story um, and uh, 
So I believe these refugees, in in the last effort of desperate uh, to 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 save their civilization, they 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 took the horns of a ram, and uh, and and put the seeds in there, right? And then sealed it with wax, and that allowed them to keep the the seeds over the ocean and the rain and stuff. And they sailed in different directions. They went. Um, some of them went to South America. Some of them went to North America. Some of them went to Egypt. Um, the ones that went to Egypt are now known as the Sea Peoples that attacked there. And there was multiple waves of it. It wasn't just one. It was. It happened a few times, right? But the ones that went to South America weren't very well documented. But I went there myself, and I actually found out. This is how I found out about these figures, these Atlantean figures. There are multiple stories all across South America, right, of these civilizing heroes, or now now known as gods, that um, actually uh, uh, brought knowledge and uh, civilization, uh, civilizing arts to the people, right? Because uh, they say that the people were sort of cave dwelling kind of people back then but when these white skinned bearded people came over the sea um they brought seeds with them and these seeds with these seeds and the knowledge of uh, architecture they started civilization all right mm -hmm. and uh have you ever heard the term cornucopia cornucopia yeah yeah i said yeah, yeah. look that up because like that, that that cornucopia is, There's a movie is, is called actually a reference to the horn that I'm talking about, the horn of Capricorn. That horn is the horn of the seeds that they used to keep, that the civilizing heroes kept the seeds in. And um, so, uh, now see uh, when the before you came on, when we, were, we were talking about uh, sanitary, th sanitary, sanitary and uh, how he was uh, always compiling old, uh, old uh, literature of ancient uh, lore and stuff like that. Pretty and uh, like mm -hmm. the sun pillars that was uh, set up all through Phoenicia, there they would take this. Uh, these stories and they would put them down on the basins of the freaking pillars and he would go around and he would collect them and he was probably one of the first recorded historians in history you know what I mean and uh, to this day like he's still accredited as being like you know freaking pretty thorough on his uh, writings and stuff and uh, that was who is that sorry Senechenathion Okay, can, can, Karma, can you send me a link or, or something? Like, I okay, can... so can I ask you a question too? First, before we get too far from what you were just saying, because I was already um, looking at this, because you were talking about the correlation in the Phoenicians and trading over here in yeah. South America. Yeah, the As okay, the Atlantis or the Zorpla too. And yeah. I'm like, listen, so I'm just looking at it in reference to where location is um, in regards to. Lebanon and remember um Roger you were telling me about sometimes that um the there were places that they they were places they were in places that like other places too besides what we just see right yeah. here like they're yeah. uh, so Baalbek Baalbek and uh, Lebanon is the example the of the Atlantean is, structures that used to be she, there with, so like with before the, the cataclysm what she's referring to is the Phoenicians had a very, very uh, large uh, area for distribution. Like they could, their, their reach was pretty broad. You know what I'm saying? Like they've even got stories that could possibly link the the Phoenicians to actually making it to England at one point or another. And that's what she's yeah. talking about. And I'll yeah. take that copy yeah. of. I'll just uh, copy and paste the name of the guy. I was and, and and how is it right? How is it that the Phoenicians had this high technology of naval travel, uh, and you know, so early on in the piece? The they only were... explanation really is that they inherited that information from somewhere else, from a previous 
people, right? And, and see, they, that had, is power. Very they had power even before the Greeks did. So, it, I mean, yeah, exactly. You know, their yeah. influence was because they inherited it from Atlantis. They they are actually the descendants of the Atlanteans. So they are one of the refugee, um, refugee um, waves of refugees that came to the mainland. Right, uh, and that's why um, they never really settled in one place. They kind of traded and 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 went around the place uh, because they they came from somewhere else. You know? I, I pasted the uh, name of Senna Chinathion in the. Uh, oh, I was going to send them the link. You, I was just looking you, for mines because I have so much stuff. I have Sharmans. I have the Phoenicians here. Then I have Heron City, Schausenmetzner. Like I had Neo. Played the, like the Mount Neo Olympus, Plate, yeah. everything we talk about, yeah. But Neo played versus Neolithic. Um, you're gonna have to give me like a few more minutes because I haven't gotten it yet. It's in my, it's I'll tell you, like I'll share it. It's in my Roger, history. Roger, Roger, did you say you posted the link? Yeah, no, right the here. name. It's in the Jitsi chat right there. Just uh, copy and paste. Oh, Jitsi chat. Oh, okay, I'm not checking the Chinathion. He posted the name, yeah. He How do I get to the Jitsi chat? How does that work? Oh, it's the you? little You're on Jitsi, like, message thing on the bottom. Yeah, you the, see on the bottom? If you scroll uh, yeah. up, Where you can mute oh, yeah, video. Yeah. Look, you see mute video. Yeah. No, and I got it, I got it. Yeah. Dokey. Now, uh... And it's your Nathan, that's and it's your Nathan. Uh, Okay, so, so just just before I lose my 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 uh, spot there, um, all all I was trying to say is, I'm suggesting that the Phoenicians descended from the Atlanteans. Also, mm -hmm. I think the um, other examples of people like that are the Basque people of Spain, right? Yeah, How yeah. they have their that language isolate in Spain. I think that's an, uh, an injection from refugees from Atlantis as well. Mm -hmm. So I bet, I, I would bet that there would be similarities between the Basque language and the probably Phoenician language. Well, with the Basque, it's also but DNA I've, too. Like I've, their, their genetics, I've never looked into it. Their genetics are unique. Yeah, so. the genetics is interesting to look at as well. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. I, I wonder if the Hebrew people were also um because they were kind of very entwined with the phoenicians um you know and uh i i also believe the minoans so like i found the sea people story really interesting because they they specifically named these different sea peoples right yeah and That's one of nice. them i i could identify as the tribe of dan okay because uh it, the name it sounded very similar, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure of it. You see, uh, and a lot uh, of the archaeologists and historians, uh, they actually say that uh, where the region is that Dan comes from, which would be up around Anatolia, okay, they actually say, freaking, there, there are parts of the Sea People that did originate in that area. So, mm. so, um. Mm. um now, like uh, Noah, okay, like you know, you know of Noah's tomb. Yeah. Right? Okay, that that's like exactly. maybe that's like maybe twenty miles away from freaking Mount Ararat. Okay, not a lot of people don't know mm. that. They have no clue that mm. it's like literally twenty, thirty miles away from Mount Ararat. <laughs> and that's in Saudi Arabia, right? No, that's up there or, in Anatolia. Or... That's right there in freaking uh. That's right. Well, in today, it, it would be freaking Turkey. But at the time, it was uh -huh. the Arar Arartu. And yeah, 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 yeah. Back with the Assyrians um, and the Arartu. And now, the Romanians are claiming that the Arartian uh, history actually belongs to them. And that it was taken away from them because Turkey was made into a country which a lot of the area they had like Mount Ararat was actually ran by the Urartu it was controlled by the Urartu so 
There, there's a big what, thing going on. Who's the Iraq? Huh? Who's the Iraq? The Iraq was a civilization that, uh, they were, uh, well, after the Phoenicians, and after, I, I, I would, it, it's hard to explain. Like, you had the Hittites, okay? But then you mm. had the Urartu, which was before um, all of the Hittites and everything. And the Urartu, okay. they, they were uh, kind of uh, integrated into uh, the, the Minoans. Or, really? Yeah. I've never heard that name before. Yeah. Urartu. Here, I'll spell it out to you. Urartu. Urartu. Now that goes to a. Uh, you know, I could probably just pull it up. Oh, yeah. The Urartu Kingdom is basically what it is. Wow. Huh. And the Urartu Kingdom uh, took up a pretty wide uh, span, too. Is that coming through? Yeah, not, from the Euphrates. Uh, not if you're sharing your screen. Nope. No, no but I don't see it. Huh. Yeah. And Interesting. It's just the so chat. Can you put it on your screen? Yeah, I can screen share it. Uh, let me let me screen share this real quick. Um, image for the Aurora 2. And there you okay. Go. Can you see it? Yeah. That is the Aurora 2. And that is... Let's see. That's the see. kingdom that was eventually. I'm thinking it's the. Uh, uh, it was the. Uh, not Minoans. I, I keep wanting to say that because it's American, but it's not. It's uh, the My Mycenaeans. They're the ones that integrated in with the freaking Iranians whenever. Um, uh, the whole Atlantean, when uh, Persia as well. uh, developed into the yeah. empire it was. But these guys ended up integrating into uh, integrating into the Persian Empire basically. And it was more up in this area up around An Anatolia right here. Okay. Yeah, can you guys see my mouse? That <laughs> again? Uh, Okay, up there, up there, you know where Anatolia is, right? No. Okay. Up, Anatolia is... Let me see if I can get on the action. Now, can you see my mouse? Yes. Okay, Anatolia is this area right here that I'm circling. Okay. Now, this is... It's like... Where, I can't look in Syria, right? anymore. My, it's, my... it's up around Turkey and around the, the borders of Lebanon. Beautiful area. Fucking love that area. Um, then you have Romania. You have Azerbaijan, um, Georgia. All of that are areas that were ruled by the Urartu. Need to bring that. And the Urartu stretched all the way to Mount Lebanon. And uh, when it when it comes to that region, a lot of people don't realize like that's where a lot of the influence comes from. Like the flood myths, a lot of people believe that it actually started because the Caspian Sea uh, flooded out into the the Black Sea after freaking uh, changes happened in the Egyptian. Uh, Stop. In the Egyptian continent or the African continent. Man. You know. I can actually give you a little bit of insight into that. Um, the so that that area was also known as the Garden of Eden, right? Back in ancient times, it was called Eden. Yeah. Okay. Because the whole area was the most lush, huh. green area on the planet, right? The pl no, fertile. Because there was so much water there, and what happened was this big catastrophe happened where 
uh, a tsunami came up the Mediterranean and hit that corner there of mm. a- a- Anatolia where you just um, circled. And it go- can you go onto Google Maps um, uh, with the like with the satellite view? Um, let me. I'm having issues getting on my search engine, but I can get it. You as well. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. It's. I think it's becoming an epidemic because I'm, I'm, I'm hearing a lot. It was of just a doctor. Yeah, I know. it's here. It is. Yeah. No. Where you want? Okay. To see if you can get satellite view down the bottom left. Of oh, satellite. Yeah. Okay. Scroll out to Anatolia. I just type it in. Or you know Turkey. Uh, <laughs> Anatolia, Turkey, <laughs> not Anatolia, United States. Anatolia. Anatolia. Yes. Oh, there it is. It, it, yeah, it had it in your. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so so zoom out a bit. All right. Zoom out. Zoom out some more. Some more. Yeah. Okay. Look at where it's at. See, yeah, zoom out more. Let's zoom see. out even more. Oh my God! What do you want to do to me? <laughs> okay, I got you. This is about as far as I can go. You there? Take a bit of it. Now he muted. Can you go back out again, please? Got to skin with this guy, man. This is about as far as I can go on here. Yeah, that's good. It's just looking at shiny at the no. Now see. Can this, you scroll in a little bit, please? This is Syria, right here. Okay. Yeah. That's Lebanon. Now Assyria was this whole area right in here. Turkey, right here. This is Anatolia. Um, Georgia, <coughs> Azerbaijan, and Romania which is or Armenia sorry the Armenians these were the basic areas for the Urartu with this right here as well this is Vaughn okay and Vaughn is where you find the uh, Mount the Mount uh, oh god what was it it's a uh, keep this is the mountain that I was to. Um, I believe it is. If you look here, here's Armenia. Here's Vaughn. Armenia believes that this is all a part of the original territory of, uh, of the Urartu. And that's why Turkey and Armenia don't get along. Armenia. Mm-hmm. Lebanon is just right here. You see? Mm-hmm. So you've got Lebanon here. You've got Turkey here. You got freaking the Urartu here. Um, this is Assyria right around here all through here and then down here where Iraq is that's all freaking Babylon and the Sumerians and Israel is all the way down here now he was talking he was talking and then he freaking went off so I don't know. Yeah, he got I think he got cut off. Can you hear me? Are you there? Hello? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. We got the map up. Okay, uh, okay. I, I must have muted myself, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've been talking this whole time and I couldn't well, understand you why you're, you're talking over me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you gonna have to start over and say it again. <laughs> That's um, so, my point was, 
you can actually see the scars in the landscape geologically um, that these ancient tsunamis caused um, when that when those big floods happened of the flood myths, right? Uh, Kama, do you know the flood myths we're talking about, like Noah's flood, that kind of thing? So uh, if you zoom right back out again, I want to show you guys how to look at this, okay? I want you to put your goggles on for catastrophe, massive catastrophe. So like zoom out even further back to the whole planet. This is as far back as I can go. Yeah, that's perfect. So notice how um, it's all green except North Africa and then it bleeds out into like Russia kind of area. That's the direction that the, the, the tsunami went, right? So like where the Azores are in the middle of the Atlantic there, that's where the comet hit. And, and the comet hit um, the ocean there and it hit Canada where the Great Lakes are. And um, the tsunami backfired up between Portugal and Morocco, it went up the Mediterranean and hit Syria. And it went, the tsunami was so big, it went all the way up Kazakhstan, um, all the way up into Mongolia. And you can see how it just ate out all the topsoil of that whole area, right? And then it, and then it rushed down and it actually killed the, the Indus Valley civilization next to India and Pakistan. And um, that's why that whole area today is desert up in, up, up in, up in Africa because of this big tsunami that hit it like uh, 12,000 BC. And um, before like that. that, it was all just, it was all green, you know? There was no desert, now, up here Sahara on, desert. In, in the Mongolia area, in the Kazakhstan and all that, that's also referred to as the Russian steppe. So you also have to take that into consideration yeah. too. Like, can, can you guys tsunami. see how, what I mean though by like yeah. how the color bleeds out into that direction? You can almost see the flow, right? Yeah. You can almost see the flow going in that direction. Now see, I, I was it. also uh, made aware of the fact that like up here in Egypt and Libya and Algeria, um, all of this area was actually a beautiful lush forest uh, environment, swamp environment, and there was water and everything mm -hmm. all through here. And uh, that's right up here where uh, Italy and Greece and all this is, there's a harsh mountain terrain here called the Alps. Okay, now what happened is, is platelets from this area down here actually started uh, freaking pushing, and this area freaking started changing, and Africa actually became bigger because freaking it was shoving uh this uh plate into the freaking southern part of uh, europe and creating those mountains but you see how it used to be hooked together you can see how the boot of italy kind of goes down right here into this space right here if you move it down some do you see how it locks together do you yeah. see here? Yeah, that's crazy. You can see that it's a puzzle. Everything about the planet, if you look at it, okay, look at all of this and tell me that it couldn't fit together like a, mm -hmm. like a puzzle. Especially exactly. like, the, and you yeah, can also you can see, see how, how um, catastrophes have shaped the landscape. For example, the, the Gulf of Mexico, the reason it's a horseshoe shape is because all that water that got melted from the comet impact, had to run down, um, run down, see see how it scarred the landscape there, all that rocky bits, and then it goes down into that horseshoe shape. Um, so if you if you could zoom out a little bit more, a little bit, so you can see all of North America. Yeah. Okay. Uh, see how, like, where ca the Great Lakes are in Canada, um, yeah. Up there, that, that's where there was two, two miles of ice back uh, on top of that landscape, and that got vaporized or like melted mm -hmm. by this comet impact, and it rushed down to the Gulf of Mexico, and it caused all that uh, the like the um, 
what are the the Grand Canyon and all that stuff got made by this vast amount of water that had to run down into the Gulf of Mexico and it ate it out like that horseshoe shape there. Oh, uh, you can and, see that. Um, uh, that goes back into uh, Randall, which he was talking about with his uh, theories. I know the last stream I seen, he was researching some of the stuff going up by going on up by the Hudson Bay, and uh, he yeah. also. He also believes that these Great Lakes right here were actually the result of uh, impact, but he doesn't really have yes. any hardened proof of it yet. You know what I'm saying? He he. Well, he... it's right in the middle of. He's got evidence. He's got a lot of evidence. Uh, it's right in the middle of the debris field. You well, know, according uh, to the... according to what he, you know what I'm saying? Like he he's like they do have a lot of evidence of of. Uh, catastrophes happening there but he he believes that the freaking all of these lakes were created because of an impact well Just, yeah you know I, I don't saying? see why not i think that that's totally plausible i think that's <laughs> totally plausible yeah i mean he's a really really intelligent man and and just the, the amount of evidence they've amassed um the the cosmic tusk have you yeah. ever gone to that website he's he's got like 200 300 different articles um on this topic um and in a searchable format so like you can go through there and like stick through it it's really nice now uh <laughs> you, when you're talking about uh the sea people too and uh the phoenicians in Atlantis. Yeah. The one thing you, so they came have, out, to, you yeah. have to realize too, though, is Malta and Tripoli. Okay. Now, Malta is a major point when it comes to the Phoenicians. Now, a lot of people aren't aware of that. And Tripoli uh -huh. is, is also a, a very important area that you have to look at too. Um, Tunisia. <laughs> All of this, all of this was a part of the Phoenician, uh, uh, basically the Phoenician Empire. You know what I mean? I can't wait to go there one day. I've been to Gibraltar before. Yeah. Um, that, that's I've seen the Rock of Gibraltar. <laughs> yeah. And now Malta is a very, very interesting story behind it. Like these people, the natives of Malta, just ended up there they have no idea how they got there they themselves have no idea how they got there yeah they don't even have freaking to this day they don't have boats that are freaking strong enough to freaking make it even to uh uh Palmer Pal palermo i mean and all that they, they have no idea how they got there Yeah, Malta is a bit of a mystery, eh? Um, well, I think a lot of those islands, are, like for example, Cyprus as well, the the, yeah. um, the Minoan, Tyrus, you know, uh, the, the the Bronze Age civilization, they were all like refugee waves of Atlanteans that that came and settled on these islands, and. Um, Unfortunately, some of them got wiped out. But. Now, I, be um, I believe this is the area that um, I was talking about where archaeologists are coming out here. In, uh, it's on the south side of Spain, on the other side of uh, Gibraltar. Right now, it's uh, up here by uh, Helva, Port Umbria. This whole area, they're starting to find remnants of freaking old uh, city port that had literally collapsed into the freaking water that was once here. And then up here on the, the shores, they're finding freaking evidence that it had uh, dried up and that there was actually water in this area here too at one time. And... Um, there was actually ports going out there as well. It's it's what you're saying there. That's that is very 
interesting stuff. I've been actually checking that out too. I should probably not even be discussing this, considering it's about history. <laughs> <laughs> That's what today. Well, this is, this is all. This is all history, man. To to oh, say something, you know. But just I'm, because I, I we mean, don't, I have, am. I am interested in it. Don't get me wrong. The the the, the fascinating one. thing about history is like most of it is undiscovered still. You know, so like <laughs> we're still discovering these these histories, and we're trying to push it further and further back, right? Because yeah. there's only so much recorded history. It's the unrecorded history that's difficult to get to, right? Well, a lot and of people you, have a hard time with like the concept of how much unrecorded history there is. Like, like everybody thinks that all the information is recorded from even 300 years ago, and that's not even true. Like, there's crap loads of information that's just not there from two, three hundred years ago, you know? So, like, in that aspect, I mean, there's a lot of lost history in, in modern history that's just gone. Totally. You know? Um, I just got someone at the door, so I'll be off for a bit. All right. I think we're getting ready to go, too, right? Isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's getting to the end of it, but... Um, while we're here, though, I can actually show you something, though. Um, you were talking about uh, how how far did they actually ex extend to? Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Now, um, my internet started, my, my browser started glitching, so I couldn't look anymore. Troy, actually, the city of Troy is uh, the best. Let me see. The city of Troy is up in this area somewhere. This is uh, the part where the uh, mysterious sea people was supposed to have come down from in mm. Egypt. And Troy was from this region right here. And uh, you had the Phoenicians in here. They stretched all the way down to here. And they went all the way across the northern continent of Africa to Morocco. Now, they had this area, and they believed that they were actually able to come up the coast right here and make it to the southern shores of London. <laughs> so if they could make it there, then possibly they could make it over there to South America where Mr. Robot was talking about as well, right. on those wooden horses that you just showed me. Now, since we have it open, this is what I was trying to tell you the other day. Now, they figured out whenever it came to discovering America again and uh, traveling to America that instead of coming this way like they did the first few tri times, mm -hmm. all they had to do was come down to Africa and then shoot across this area here up into Puerto Rico and Cuba. Okay, can you go back? How did, okay, how did they used to do it? I had it zoomed in too much. Can you do it again? From okay. where, to, yeah, I had it from zoomed. Portugal Not even and good. from say England. Okay, mm -hmm. they would they would come down the shore, down to, Spain. Mm -hmm. to Africa, and then they would. No, 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 no. The first time before they went to Africa, what was the way they were taken before? What was the route before that? They were coming from uh, Portugal straight across to right here this area and that's a long route they found out they could get there faster if they came to africa first and mm -hmm. they shot across right here up into puerto rico and cuba mm -hmm. you see yeah I mean, I guess, mm -hmm. because you have uh you have currents all right and these currents they come down like this and then they shoot up here they create a tide here and it goes you right can see right. the tide mm -hmm. And that's, <laughs> that's why I'm saying that it would make sense that they could poss there there is a possibility that Egyptians did make it to South America because that's the easiest route from the African continent to the Americas. Mm -hmm. and that that's that's even recorded in, in known history, you know what I mean? That's that's how ships would uh, do their trade routes is by that route right there. So, I always thought that was pretty good. Um, let me see how much time we got here. Yeah, we're at an hour and a half now. So, um, 
we can end this and then tomorrow we can get back into this right here if you guys want to yeah, yeah that's cool it's strange it's strange hey guys i'm gonna have to bail so um thank you very much i appreciate uh the insight I'm glad yeah you thanks for up. coming in i appreciate that thanks all right brother catch up see, see you later. Karma. see, see you later, later. have a good night be safe but yeah um that was that was pretty good um we uh actually got to get in some extra stuff because all the stuff that i'd gone over was already finished by the time uh, robot got in here so the rest of that, oh, was, cool. that the rest of that was extra it was pretty good yeah. too so yeah it gives you something to consider something to think about yeah so that's good well it's like then we can incorporate it next week maybe if you well, can see get the, it the the thing is is like with atlanta atlantis though i mean that's something that i'd like to incorporate like tomorrow you know what i mean like, okay because like uh because it's a strangeness thing because yeah, it's still something yeah i mean don't get me wrong i am interested in it but i mean like today's about history you know what i'm saying <laughs> like, i get what you're saying like the cold hard facts type more so stuff that you're not cold hard but definitely the ones yeah. that have been extremely researched atlantis is still more a little bit of a mythical type thing so it's but it's strangeness because it's not a conspiracy it's really a hard evidence that it's definitely present well, and there was never how much there was never uh, conspiracy sur uh, surrounding surrounding it this. yeah that's what I'm saying that's why you were talking it, about it, it tomorrow was, night. like you said it was a mystery you know what I mean it's a mystery strange yeah a strange mystery. that's why it makes sense to why you want to talk about it tomorrow yeah no I was just saying I understand it doesn't fall into any other category but that and could this but more research will be required for it to be for this I'll tell you what we can talk about it tomorrow too because it kind of fits into what we were getting at too because we were talking about Casey and uh Casey was one who was a hard he was 100% believer in uh Atlantis so oh do, cool we could do that tomorrow alrighty and uh we'll get off here and uh freaking I'll see you tomorrow okay yes sir have a good night be safe thank you you too <laughs> and I will see you guys later. I'm going to stop the recording and stop the stream. And hope you guys have a good day.